Hello, hello, everybody. I hope you're all doing really well. Uh, printing. <laughs> First of all, thank you ever so much for all of your orders. It's really appreciated. Uh, I got way more orders than I was expecting. And as you can imagine, I'm a little bit overwhelmed actually, uh, because I'm a one man show, uh, printing, signing, trimming, packaging, and taking to the, uh, to the post office. Uh, your print is probably gonna take a few weeks to get to you. So please be patient. Uh, but having said that, I really enjoy printing actually, and uh, it's been a, a blast putting these orders together, uh, but it just takes a little bit of time. So thank you ever so much for that. This week's video, uh, because I've been doing so much printing, I thought, well, maybe I'll just do a video on printing. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you may have noticed the last few posts, I've been putting up some black and white photographs from my trip to the Gobi Desert in 2019. For whatever reason, dune images or images of the desert always look so much nicer in black and white. The tonalities, uh, just the, the smoothness of the sand, it's very sexy actually. Uh, so I've been dabbling a little bit in black and white and posting on my Instagram and I thought perhaps maybe I'd go over with uh, one of those images with you today and then we'll go right to the, uh, the print process. First of all, I really wanna thank uh, Photospeed uh, Paper uh, there in the UK for supplying me with the paper. It's very much appreciated. If you are interested in Photospeed Paper, uh, I'll leave a link down below where you can get a small discount on your next purchase of that paper. So thank you to Photospeed for supplying the paper. Uh, also, just before I get into the video, one more announcement. My book, Quiet Light, is almost sold out. Uh, if you go to Kozu website, uh, if you were there last week, my second edition is all sold out. But uh, Greg at Kozu has found a box uh, with, um, I'm not sure how many books are left, not that many I hear. Uh, so if you are interested in grabbing one before they're all gone, uh, now's the time to do it. And again, I'll leave a link down below. All right, without further delay, let's get right into uh, processing an image and then getting it prepared for printing. All right, thanks. Okay, now this is one of the images we're gonna be working on today. Now as color photographs, they work fine, uh, but I think they would probably work better as uh, black and white photographs. Now, loosely defined, a black and white photograph, uh, ideally you want some rich blacks, so blacks without any detail in them, and the brightest whites you can get away with. And of course, a lot of gray tones in between. The idea is to get as much tonality throughout the photograph as possible and uh, also create contrast and really bring out those graphic shapes. So as you can see in this photograph, we have two very defined graphic shapes. We have this one in the foreground and we also have this one in the background. And the reason why I thought this would make a good black and white is, well, first of all, I've already made a black and white of uh, a zoomed in uh, portion of this photograph here, uh, but it just has such wonderful sweeping lines. We have shadows and of course, the parts that uh, really draw your eye in are the, just happen to be the brightest parts in the photograph. Now, unfortunately, in this photograph here, in the corner here, you can see uh, tire marks from our vehicle, so I'm going to have to uh, resolve that somehow. And also, in many of my images, my sensor on my camera, this is uh, with a, the Nikon D850, uh, <laughs> was filthy. It's not sand, it's just poor, poor uh, cleaning skills, I guess. Uh, my sensors are always getting filthy. Uh, so we'll have to uh, uh, we'll have to sort that out as well. 
So the first thing I do with any uh, image that I, I think I'm going to turn into a black and white is uh, I just first of all want to see where the highlights are. Now I already know where the bright or the or the brightest spots. I already know where the brightest spots are. But the first thing I'm going to do is just go over to the black and white here and change it to black and white. Now as you can see, this is black and white. But if we look at the histogram here, there aren't any uh, pure whites in there and there aren't any pure blacks. And even though I've indicated that a good black and white, you need you know deep blacks and, and bright whites, there are a lot of exceptions to those rules. And uh, this image here is an example of that. This was taken also in the Gobi Desert. Uh, as you can see from the raw file here, the light was not ideal, but I did recognize this beautiful pattern in the side of this dune here. And I think uh, a number of us photographed this, this pattern. It's almost uh, reminiscent of uh, uh, Picasso. It reminds me of Picasso for some reason. But I took the photograph anyway because I realized that this might make a good black and white. And here's my black and white version. And as you can see, this is more of a high key approach. Uh, we don't have deep, uh, dark shadows. I've kept everything very light. And uh, sometimes light works better than, you know, lots of contrast. Uh, just uh, as a, uh, a, com a comparison to an image that I've decided to really darken and, and bring out the mood. Uh, here is a photograph of uh, Cerro Torre in, uh, in Patagonia. And you can see that the light is quite nice, but it, it's missing something. It's, it's missing that mood and the drama. And I think the color in this particular photograph is actually taking away from the graphic nature of the image. So I want to simplify it, just have that beautiful light and uh, and that dramatic peak. So I converted it into a black and white. And as you can see in this example, I've really darkened that sky and brightened up that, uh, that sunlit area to really dramatize the scene. So you have to kind of an analyze each photograph and, and think, well, okay, well, how do I want to portray this? Do I want it to be dark and moody or do I want it to be light and uh, and feel kind of uplifting? So back to this image here, uh, I don't think it's particularly moody and I don't think it's particularly uh, needs a bright treatment either because it does have some beautiful dark shadows in there. So I just want to emphasize the highlights and the shadows. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to press the Option key on a Mac and grab the whites slider and you see that the screen's gone black and just slowly bring up that slider until I can s start to see some of those highlights popping in the frame here and you can see them at the top there. So we'll just release that. Now don't panic, <laughs> this is very very bright. What I'm going to do now is do the same for the blacks. Hold down the Option key on a Mac and slowly bring that down so there's some black areas showing. As you can see in the histogram here, we've really stretched it out. We've stretched it out to the point where there's uh, the graph is touching the very far left for the blacks and the very far right for the highlights. Now, obviously, this is a bit too graphic for me. So I'm going to bring down those highlights. And it's all on visual appeal here. Uh, there's no wrong or right way to do this. Uh, some people might like a, a very contrasty uh, feel to an image and others perhaps softer shadows. And I'm going to bring down the blacks. like that. And I might even bring down the whites a little bit more. So what I want is for people to just look at uh, or, or, or be drawn to this section here and the, and 
the little curve in the background here. The dunes at the back, um, they are an integral part of the photograph, but I don't want the viewer to be drawn to those uh, quite as much as this foreground area. So I'm just going to zoom in here and I'm just going to keep bringing the whites down until I can see detail in the sand. Something about like that. And let's just have a look in the background here. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is the shadows. Uh, I don't want my image to be quite as contrasty. So I'm going to just brighten up those shadows just a bit. Okay, so now as I look at this, uh, the, the background, uh, I really love the background in here, but uh, I'd like to make it a little bit more subdued. And what I mean by that is there's some very definitive ev edges of the dunes in the background that are a little bit distracting. So I'm just going to grab a uh, the, the paintbrush tool here and uh, click on this box, Show Selected Mask Overlay. And I'm just going to paint in, uh, let's just uh, bring the feathering down just a tad. I'm just going to paint in this section here. And let's just turn on the auto mask. Um, let's just zoom in 100% here. I'm just going to paint in a mask. I don't want it to go overlap these um, these sand dunes here. All right, that'll do. So we're just going to turn off the uh, the auto mask and the selected mask. And I'm just going to bring down the clarity. Um, I'm going to bring in a little bit of uh, haze. So opposite of dehaze, bring it down a little bit. And I'm also going to bring the whites down just a tad and contrast. And I'm just going to brighten up the blacks and the shadows. So let's just zoom out there. All right, I think that'll do. Right, the next thing I want to do is brighten up um, this sunlit area in the background there. It's kind of blending in with the background. So I'm just going to zoom in and grab a new brush. And I'm just going to, let's see here, bring up the density and the flow. And uh, we're just going to uh, feather this just a little bit more. And I'm just going to paint this in. Now, just have to mind that I don't go over into the background. So we'll just bring that brush size down a little bit. Like so. We'll just turn that off. And all I'm going to do here is bring up the whites to the point where um, it's just on the verge of, of uh, being overexposed. You can use the histogram, something maybe like that. You'll notice now that the, the sand dune or the, the light on the sand dune is quite a bit brighter than the background and that's kind of what I was after. Now you'll notice, notice that there's a little bit of bleeding going on where I overlapped uh, with the brush. So what we can do is we can go down to the range mask here and go to luminance and just uh, click on this little box here that says show luminance mask so you can see the actual mask itself. And the slider here has a range. So this is shadows here and highlights at the top here. So we're just going to bring the shadows slider up so it's not affecting the shadows as much. You can see that the mask slowly disappears from that darker area 
in the, the sand dune. And we can refine that with the smoothness. Now this is uh, it's quite a sharp edge. So we'll just bring that down. And you can see now that uh, it's more or less just affecting the, uh, the highlights. Let's try that. Voila. And if we zoom in, uh, let's go into 300%. Just want to make sure there's nothing weird going on with the, uh, the edges there. Sometimes it affects the edges kind of a little bit strangely. So now you can see that this is definitely the brightest spot in the, uh, in the photograph. And I'd like to do the same to the front here, but I only want to do it on this curve. I don't want to do the, uh, the whole area here because we don't want to draw the viewer's eye out of the frame. So I'm just going to grab the radial filter and bring it to about there. Now we're going to have to experiment a little bit here. And I'm just going to invert this, bring the feathering down just a little bit. And again, we're just going to bring up the, the whites. Um, again, it's personal taste and how far you want to go. So if I zoom in uh, 100%, I want it to be really bright, but I'd like to still be able to see just a little bit of detail in there. That's what I love about this radial filter. I mean, you can just move it around. Uh, it's, it's really nice to use because it's so intuitive and you can see the results straight away. It's one of the, the best features in, in Lightroom, I think. Just bring that out just a little bit more. There we go. And uh, we'll just get rid of that. Now I'm just going to uh, zoom out and uh, put this image uh, on a screen on its own. And so we kind of get a look of, of what's going on here. So, so far it's looking, it's looking pretty good. I do feel though that uh, I could probably crop this to perhaps a four by five. I don't think we really need all of this stuff on the side here. And uh, we don't need all of this on here on this side either. So let's just go to the crop tool, four by five. And I'm gonna bring it over to the edge here. Something like that. Yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, I'm going to open this up in Photoshop just to finish things off a little bit and then uh, we'll make a print of it. Okay, I'm not going to bore you with uh, cleaning up the, uh, the image from all the dust spots, but that's one of the things with adding lots of contrast to a photograph, uh, you'll start to notice a lot of dust spots uh, showing up. So I'm going to clean those up and I'm also uh, going to clone out the uh, the tire tracks in here. But before I do that, uh, I just wanted to make sure that uh, we have some nice bright whites and some reasonably dark shadows. I don't think I need blacks, black shadows in this photograph or this particular version of this photograph. Uh, for whatever reason, I just much prefer to adjust my contrast in Photoshop over Lightroom. It's just a habit that I've gotten into. There's no particular uh, advantage to it. It's just something that I do personally. So I'll open up the levels and uh, the same thing again. What I'll do is hold down the option key and just slowly bring down that uh, that slider so that I can see where my whites are. So in this case, we definitely have the brightest areas in this dune here. Um, if I zoom out, we should see some 
bright areas in the top there as well. So you can see it there. So I'll just bring the slider until we can just see some blown out highlights. Like so. And the blacks, as I said, I don't think in this version I need um, black blacks. I think it would just be too contrasty. But we can have a look. You'll notice that they're actually down in the corners here where we start to lose details in the blacks. This is uh, with the blacks adjusted. You'll notice there's a lot more contrast. Now what I could do, uh, I could actually bring up the midtones. to about the same as the highlights. So w whenever I have uh, uh, shadows of blacks at 24, I'll bring the midtones down to 1.24, or in this case, 1.25. So let's just have a look at that. And you can see that it's added quite a bit of contrast. So that's a possibility. Um, I might try and print one copy up like this and then one without the contrast and just kind of compare the two. I think I prefer the one without the strong contrast, to be honest with you. I do like the, the white brought up, but the blacks, I think I'm going to leave um, just as they were. Let's see how that looks. See, that's added a little bit of contrast, but the blacks haven't been affected. Right, I'm just going to clean this up and then uh, we'll print the photograph. Right, uh, I'm going to print from here on in. Uh, the first thing I want to do is just view this on a white uh, background. So F key and F again. And the reason why I'm looking at this on a white background over than a black background is because black background tends to make images look quite a bit brighter than they are. Whereas a white background, uh, you can really see uh, where your whites stand and your blacks. And as you can see, the, the whites in this, uh, to my eye anyway, uh, almost look as white as the background, which is a good thing. And you can do that with color images as well. Before you print, it's, it's actually probably more beneficial to view uh, your image on a white background. So I want to print this. So I'm just going to go to uh, File, Print. And as you can see, I have this set up for a different paper, uh, different profiles and so on. So the first thing I'm going to do is, now this is an older printer. It's a 7880 Epson, Epson. It's a 24 inch printer, but I've had it for about 11 years now. And uh, at some point I will be upgrading uh, but that's what I have for now, so that's what I'm using. <laughs> uh, I'm going to print this on A4 because uh, I want to do a little bit of a test print first. Uh, color matching, uh, Photoshop should be doing all the, uh, the controls of the colors, uh, not the printer. Printer settings. Okay, now in this case, it has all these things for Epson, uh, which doesn't really matter other than uh, the DPI. I never use 2880 DPI. Uh, it just wastes ink. And to be honest with you, I cannot notice the difference. Perhaps some of you can, but I, I just, I can't see the difference. 16-bit uh, output, finest detail, and... You make sure that the Epson driver color management is off. That's the printer. So the printer isn't controlling the colors. And um, I think that's it. Now, we just save that. And the profile is extremely important. So you can see I have an awful lot of profiles here. I think the paper that I'm going to use is uh, Photospeed's Platinum Etching. 
That's a beautiful paper. I highly recommend a photo speed uh, paper if you can get it. Uh, it's just starting to come into Canada. So I've had to get it actually directly from the UK and I keep running out because I, I love the paper so much. Um, these are just generic uh, profiles. Uh, photo speed will actually, if you, if you send them... Uh, a, a print with with the uh, the test uh, swatches on. They'll actually put a profile together for you for your printer uh, free of charge, which is a, a great service. Uh, I haven't taken advantage of it yet, um, so I'm just using the generic ones for now. So Photoshop manages colors. I have the uh, profile. As far as uh, rendering intent, uh, perceptual, a black point compensation I wouldn't use unless you, for whatever reason, you don't want to uh, control your blacks in Photoshop. And that's a, a subject for a whole nother video, uh, but I'm going to leave that off. Now, I haven't uh, sized this photograph for uh, A4, so I'm just going to go scale to fit medium. And I need to just flip that around. There we go. So I'm going to print this up, um, and uh, and then we'll we'll see how it how it turned out. Right, I've printed up the image. This was the original uh, photograph, and just for the fun of it, I decided to boost the contrast just a little bit. Uh, I brought the blacks up. I think I prefer this photograph here. The, the tonality is much nicer through the shadows. Uh, the blacks and the grays in the shadows are a little bit more abrupt. Uh, it's, it all comes down to personal choice, really. I quite like the photograph. Uh, it has a, a really nice movement to it going through the whole thing here. If anything, I might just dodge just a little bit in here, brighten this up just a bit in here, uh, just to kind of help your eye go through the frame. But all in all, it turned out quite nice. And, and on this paper, this is Platinum Etching by uh, Photospeed. Uh, it's a beautiful paper, has a nice texture to it and uh, I think it suits black and white really well. Incidentally, if you're wondering about the board here, this is a magnetic glass board. Uh, it works quite well, uh, except you need really strong magnets on it because some of the larger prints are quite heavy and this is such a smooth surface, uh, they slowly slide down. So you, have, you need a, a strong magnet, that's the only problem with it. Uh, the lighting in here right now is not great. Uh, I have one spotlight because originally this wall was meant for a piece of artwork and I've turned it into an office. Uh, so ideally, I, you know, it'd be nice to have two or three lights to even out the light a bit more. But uh, I really love the, the glass board. It's a great way to display prints and compare them. And uh, it's a big piece of glass because sometimes you print big prints. But yeah, uh, not a bad print. I I'm quite happy with it. All right, folks. Thank you ever so much for watching this week's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any comments, uh, please leave them down below. Uh, and as always, uh, a thumbs up is always, always appreciated. Right, hopefully next week I'll be in the field and we can do some more stuff on composition. Thanks ever so much. Bye-bye.